Hey, what's going on guys? Mike from The Retrolectors. And today we're gonna to do another exclusive list for the Sega Dreamcast. We're on volume eight now. So now we're getting down to the nitty gritty of the final bit of exclusives on the Sega Dreamcast. And we're gonna start it off with Daytona USA. Developed by Genki, released March 12th, 2001 in North America and sold 70,276 units. Daytona USA has seen its share of success in arcades including a sit-down racing experience unlike anything we've ever seen at the time. Originally, Daytona USA's home port was Sega's answer to the then popular Namco's Ridge Racer. The arcade experience was then ported to the Sega Saturn and its revamp was later brought to the Sega Dreamcast. Daytona USA 2001 features every original Daytona USA course, three new tracks, and every track is playable in normal, reverse, mirrored, or reverse mirrored. Originally released with online functionality, it was later removed due to the developer's hard coding the IP address of servers that were intended for AT&T. Next up, NFL 2K1. Developed by Visual Concepts, released September 7th, 2000, and sold 904,184 units. Rated as one of the highest rated games on Metacritic, with an overall score of 97. NFL 2K1's revamped gameplay, graphics, and the ability to play a friend, both online and off, was credited as one of the features why the NFL 2K1 got such a high score. NFL 2K1 was in contention to win both Video Game of the Year and Best Multiplayer Game of the Year but lost to Chrono Cross for Game of the Year and Quake 3 Arena for Multiplayer Game of the Year. Although Sega was seeing financial issues on the back end, NFL 2K1 was the game that really pushed Sega and Visual Concepts into the stratosphere and made EA second think their sport franchise future. Pod Speed Zone. Developed by Ubisoft, released December 5th, 2000, and sold 27,319 units. Pod Speed Zone, or also known as Pod 2 Multiplayer Online, is a sequel to the 1997 racing game. Pod Story has you, the player, racing on Saturn's largest moon, Titan, where a viral outbreak took place, and you must race against the only person who knows how to stop the virus. Makes sense, sounds like the next premise of the next Fast and Furious movie. Receiving average reviews with some stating that as a racing game, its experience is as mediocre as a racing game can be. Sword of the Berserk, Guts Rage. Developed by Ukes, released really? March 16th, 2000 and sold 113,803 units. Sword of Berserk, Guts Rage, or also known as Berserk Millennium Falcon Arc Chapter of the Flowers of Oblivion, try to say that three times fast, is a hack and slash adventure game that is based on the popular Japanese manga. Sword of the Berserk is set between volume 22 and 23 of the manga, and I feel it's a similar tone to the Witcher franchise. I make that distinction because the Witcher games fit between certain books in the franchise. Sword of Berserk was released roughly at the same time as Shenmue and is considered an early adopter of the QTE or quick time events, where each event can trigger a different path of the game. The Berserk manga series had sold over 40 million units and is considered one of the best selling mangas of all time. Tokyo Extreme Racer, developed by Genki, released September 1st, 2000 and sold 61,970 units. Tokyo Extreme Racer 2 is an obvious sequel to Tokyo Extreme Racer and spawned two more sequels on the PlayStation 2. Gameplay is very similar between Tokyo Extreme Racer. Your goal is to drive around the cityscape and signal a race against enemy racers by flashing your headlights. Once the race starts, it's not your typical race that has a finish line. It instead starts with both cars having a power meter similar to a fighting game. Your goal is to pull away as fast as possible and as you're pulling away, your enemy's life gauge dwindles down. And the same could be done either way. Last but not least, 
Super Runabout, San Francisco edition. Developed by Climax Entertainment, released October 28, 2000, and sold 22,587 units. Super Runabout is a similar game to the Crazy Taxi or GTA. Instead of picking up passengers, your goal consists of delivering items or destroying parts of San Francisco cityscape. Super Runabout has a huge replayability factor that features plenty of unlocks and high score challenges. Super Runabout's San Francisco edition's overall fun is had by crashing into vehicles, buildings, and etc. But that also is the game's weakest feature. By crashing into anything, the game's physics really distract the game's overall fun at times. The Sega Dreamcast is known to have a stellar library, and with every library, there's a set of exclusives that go along with it. I've done eight volumes thus far of the Sega Dreamcast exclusive list, with one more volume on the way. If you enjoyed this video, check out this other playlist. I have my other volumes set inside of it, and this will be attached to that as well. Which one of these games is your favorite game of the bunch? Please let me know in comments down below. Please like, comment, subscribe. Thanks, guys.